Welcome to episode 177 of the Journey to Happy podcast. I'm Olga, your host, and as always, I want to give you a warm welcome for being here. I also hope you had a great Christmas and, uh, and, and that you're still listening to the podcast, even though it's the holidays. I know for me, the podcast consumption happens now while I attend the gym, while I'm on the treadmill or walking, or when I'm commuting back and forth. That's a new thing for me. I started going to the gym in November and I'm loving it. After working out in my house for two years and loving that, that I was just coming downstairs and working out, I grew out of that. <laughs> now when I leave my house, I just love seeing other people, going to a different environment. Also, this place I go to feels like pure luxury. Just because it's got all the machines I don't have, the sauna, oh, I'm just loving it. So sorry, I went off track <laughs> just to tell you when I listen to podcasts, holidays or not holidays, weekends or not. This is when I'm connected to either audiobooks or listening to podcasts when I'm having my own time and it just it feels amazing. So I hope that <clears throat> you're listening to this episode that um, that is coming to you uh, throughout the holidays. All right, we are going to, to talk about a concept that I recently listened to in one of these episodes that I've been listening to. Um, and I felt fascinated by it and it's made me reflect a lot. And I was thinking this is going to be such a good subject to bring into the podcast. And that is the compound effect of making decisions, the compound result, the compound effect of making decisions. So I was recently listening to Jim Rohn a public speaker, and a finance guru, a man who has written many books, who's guided many people around the world to make better decisions for their lives, for themselves, for their finances, for their businesses. And I was listening to him because my husband, who's done a lot of self-development work, suggested that I, that I did. He actually said, you are going to love this guy. And we were driving together and he played some of his audio recordings. And we actually, so I actually started listening to Jim Brown in the car with my husband for the first time together. And I was hooked. I started listening to his books. Um, that actually he reads, he reads like in the audio, <laughs> he, he's the one reading the book. And so it's, he's got such a loving voice. His past now is my understanding, but uh, it's just so brilliant that you get to hear his beautiful voice as he's reading you books. And my husband had also some recordings from his seminars that I've been listening to. And just to give you an idea, this man like I said, his past, but he did work late into his 70s. And I would probably say he, he this man probably worked right until before he passed. <laughs> because one of his concepts was that he, he says that the average life expectancy after somebody retires is six years. So he was always like, it's not safe to retire. <laughs> don't do it. Your odds are against the odds are against you. So don't do it. Do not retire. And he meant that as a joke, but also he he really uh, was encouraging people to continue to be of service for as long as they could because it's not only good for others, it's so good for you and your soul. And in so many ways, as I was listening to his books, he was like, just, you can tell the passion that he's got. And, and he was saying, for this particular seminar I was listening to, or it might have been a book, my cables are crossing now. He was talking about making the weekend be worth everybody's while because he was in his limited time, knowing that he's aging and that his life is coming soon to an end that he was, he was taking time away from being with his family to be in the seminar, to be giving to people his lessons. And he was thinking like this, you have no idea how much value there is in this for you, for me, for my family. 
anyways, from that perspective, I think it's just so it's it's just so inspiring, I think. Um, and those are decisions that he's made, right? And he's talking about why that decision of working late into his 70s matters to him, which is leading me nicely into our subject of today. We make decisions every day. And decisions could be as simple as having coffee in the mornings. Say I, if that's a decision you make every morning. I, I'm going to say it, I, I without a doubt to make that decision almost unconsciously now. It's just a given. Nonetheless, it's a decision. You make decisions to go into work, to work out that morning, to meditate, to shower, to wash your hair. So we're constantly making decisions. Like I said, some that you no longer think about. Some you think about, what am I eating today? What am I drinking this morning? So there are automatic decisions that you've been making for a long time, like the coffee. It's an everyday decision. You never change. It's always the same decision. And you know what is funny? Even though we make the same decisions every day, at least for my coffee, I'm equally excited about making that decision every morning. And so whether you, it is a conscious decision or not, we are always making decisions. And every decision that we make consciously or unconsciously amounts to something long term. When, but when we only look at a decision from a standpoint that it only impacts this one moment, we miss the power of the compound decision. We minimize it. So I have been uh, having a re, like up until recently, this is when I decided to join the gym. See, a decision was born. But up until recently, I ever since I got COVID, to be honest, my health has declined. I've had all kinds of issues, some of which at this moment of recording, we're still trying to figure it out. And I'm not saying this was all caused by COVID. One of my theories is that this is all caused by, by COVID, but we don't really know. Anyways, I have been having a really hard time getting up early to do my workouts. And if if you're brand new to me, you don't know this, but I am a big, big fan of morning routines. I am a morning person. I go to bed early so long as I can get up pretty early and just start my day taking care of myself. That's a decision that I started making when I became a mother and I felt my own time was so limited. And I started resenting baby, husband, house, work, all things. And I realized what was missing is what it was one hour a day just for me. So I am a big fan. You don't have to twist my arm for me to get up in the morning and go work out and meditate and have my coffee. Those are three things in my morning routine. However, for the longest time, for the last two months before I started joining the gym, I was having a really hard time getting up at 5.40 in the morning because it's super dark. It's winter now and it's really dark. And it kind of ruined or it just ruined my morning routine. But I wasn't having a hard time getting up because my room was pitch black, because outside was pitch black. I was having a hard time uh, getting up because I wasn't feeling well. And, and all of this combined, the outside not looking great, the inside not looking great had me not really looking forward to going into my garage and doing my workout. So the decision that I had been making for a long time of getting up, that was not even a thought. I would just get up, turn off my alarm, go downstairs, do my workout, come back up, meditate, make the coffee, call my boys. That routine had been interrupted and I was creating a new routine. Every morning my alarm went off and I shut it off and I stayed in bed. I only thought of it as, a, as a, in this morning. I'm not, I'm not deciding that today. And that became, a, a, a day became two, two became three, three days became two weeks, two weeks became two months. I had created suddenly a new habit out of making a recurring decision. What seems like a small decision because my brain gave me an out had a compound effect of not exercising for three months. 
No, and not just not exercising, not having a me hour for three months. So my mind was like, yeah, but you need more sleep. It's okay. You don't need to do exercise. And the truth is I didn't need to exercise. In fact, doctors were suggesting I wouldn't, but I could go for a walk. I could use that hour to write. I love writing, to journal, to sit down and meditate longer. I was just taking that hour entirely. And so I started to notice that not only was I not taking my hour first thing in the morning, I also was not doing it later. And guess what? I am of service all day. I coach, I manage, I parent, I make breakfast, I clean my house, right? All the things, like I'm sure you do as well. And after school activities, <laughs> and then do some laundry. Before you know, it's 8 p.m. and I'm putting my son to sleep. And I'm also like, oh my God, I, my God, I have to go to bed too. So that little decision that I made on a constant basis was amounting to something, a sense of lack of fulfillment. I'm not good enough. My body change. I put on some weight. My clothes wasn't fitting. I wasn't feeling strong. I didn't even want to go shopping, which is my favorite thing to do. <laughs> if my husband would offer me a compliment about how I looked, I would dismiss it immediately. I'm like, impossible. I'm not attractive right now. All like I want you to notice how many things change in a short period of time. Because I made one decision consi consistently every morning. So you see, every decision we make, whether it's consciously or not, when we minimize it and we think it only impacts me today, and you tell yourself that story, and you believe yourself that story, and you create comfort in making that decision over time, is going to have a, an effect, a compound effect. Now, I, I love following my intuition, and while I... I think I don't want people to feel, especially with movement or with any kind of habit that you want to have, I don't want it to be like super strict in your head and like you're not enjoying the habit anymore because of all the things that you're telling yourself. That's not the point. But it's really understanding when it's time for a break and that's a decision. And imagine if you make the decision consistently of actually cultivating uh, uh, relaxation and rest into your routine. Well, that's going to have a compound effect that's very positive. But this is not what was happening here. I wasn't just saying I'm tired today. <laughs> I was tired every day. And I was deciding that this was okay. And I wasn't finding my time ever. Like I wasn't compromising. My main motivator for, for me in the mornings, like I said, is to get that hour to myself. Okay. To, to before I go and take care of anybody's needs, that I take care of my own needs. That's my greatest motivator because I already know how wonderful it is for me and everybody else around me. Like I just described to you not doing it, what happened to the rest of my life, okay? So I want you to start thinking about the decisions that you're making every day because they are having a compound effect. They might seem like in the, like they're just in the moment and they're not going to impact you later. But if you think this way every day about every decision you make, <laughs> there is a compound effect to thinking that this decision does not matter. Imagine that you, let's take your marriage as an example, that you decide that it's okay to leave every morning without saying goodbye to your partner. Or you, well, you don't decide every day. You decide today I'm going to leave without saying goodbye to my partner. And then that becomes a tomorrow I'm going to do the same because now I did it once and it wasn't that bad. So I'm going to do it again and I'm going to do it again. What do we have in 10 years from now? <laughs> what else are you going to be taking away from your marriage that you're making it be okay because you made that one decision? It's got a compound effect. So when you're making decisions, making a decision is always a risk, right? Any decision that we make, has the risk of being a great decision or a terrible decision. So before we're making decisions of any kind, I want you to think about what it would be like if I was to make that same decision on a regular basis. You know, an example I like to give to my clients is when I got my, my one of my dogs, my Rottweiler, he's a hundred pound dog, but we got him when he was six pounds, the cutest little thing. It was so tempting to bring him home and bring him to sleep on our bed. 
But all I could think about is he will be this size for another two days. Before I know, he's going to be a hundred pound dog. And I already share my bed with a very tall man. <laughs> Do I also want to share this bed with a hundred pound dog? The answer is no. So although it would be a nice decision to make right now to sleep with this little puppy in my bed, who's crying because he misses his mom. I have to think of the compound long-term effect of making this decision today. Because if I do it today, how am I going to explain to this puppy that tomorrow, tomorrow that this isn't the place for him to sleep? So before you start a new project, before you make decisions for small or for big as they are, just ask yourself, what would it be if I was to suddenly decide to make this on a regular basis? And even that question on its own, even though you think, obviously, I'm not drinking beer every day, just having stop and ask yourself that ensures that you don't because you can already tell, oh, that would be a terrible idea. It wouldn't be wise. If I was to continue to make this decision every day, what will the future hold for me? For this one project, for this one relationship, for my own health. And that makes you wiser when you're making decisions. Don't always think of the immediate moment necessarily. Always think past that. And if you suffer from uh, decision paralysis, like a lot of my clients, <laughs> my clients think of the, the, the long-term effect so much that they don't make one decision ever. <laughs> they get stuck in fearing making the wrong decision. What happens to you long-term if you don't make decisions? What is the compound effect of that habit? Because that's also a habit. Okay, guys, we have thinking habits. We have behavioral habits. We have external substance habits that we need, right? Like I need to go to the spa to get my nails done. Every single one of those decisions has a compound effect, a result. Every day you're, this, you're, you're presented with the possibility of making decisions. Those decisions will compound. And it's so, and like, so sometimes you guys think, I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to run half a marathon. And all you think about is the, like the compound effect of that, right? Like the, the 22 kilometers that you have to run. And that seems like a lot. So you get scared and you just drop it. You're like, that's not for me. But imagine if you were to think, all I need to do is run one kilometer today. And tomorrow I'm going to run two kilometers. What will be the compound effect of that? And it happens way faster than you think. Now, when you're thinking about making decisions and you know you're going to have to make this decision again, like sleeping in versus getting up early and taking care of your needs, those are decisions that are going to continue to come up. In those moments, it's so important to think of the compound effect. And of course, there are other decisions that you're going to make in the spirit of the moment. You're on like on a, I don't know, um, you're driving down to a town near your, 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 your city and you decide to stop for ice cream. Okay. You don't need to think about the long-term effect of that because you just decided to be on a, a road trip and you saw ice creams. This is not going to present itself until next time you're on a road trip, which might never be right. Or it might be in five months from now. So you don't need to think about those in like, decisions that you're making that are that that are not like are not going to be presenting themselves so much as deeply as this but something that happened during covid for example is that we created a lot of compound results that we didn't think about because we were making decisions thinking this is going to last another day another week another weekend and two years later, we have people with a lot of very unhealthy habits created, such as not exercising or drinking wine at noon or wearing yoga pants, no matter what you're doing, <laughs> or showing up into meetings, like Zoom meetings, wearing clothes that you would have never done if you had to be in person. For example, when you're thinking about your parenting skills, your approach to parenting, and you notice that you're constantly fixing things for your children, that you're constantly telling them what they're capable of doing, how to do it. 
what do you think the compound effect will be for that child and that relationship of the two of you, of doing things for them, of telling them all the things that they need to do? And suddenly you begin to change that. Suddenly you begin to say like, oh shit, if I keep doing things for you, at some point you're going to think you're not capable. I don't want that for you. So even though right now my son is three and it's so tempting to do the things for him because one, they'll be faster. They'll be done, they'll be done well. Save us time. We can then get on with our day. If I keep making those decisions on a regular basis as though I was never going to be impacted by this, I will be doing a disservice to him and to myself. So now I look at my son and I know that might be might require some patience and extra time. But if I baby him or if I try and fix all the things for him, when is he ever going to develop the muscle of getting things done by himself, of feeling proud of his efforts? We forget to turn it off. He becomes a habit. We just run, run into these quick decisions that we make thinking this is never going to have an impact. But guess what? Who's raising that child? I am. How long is he going to be with me? A very long time, right? So it becomes a habit. And sometimes breaking habits is a little bit more complicated. Not impossible, but more complicated. So if you are listening to this episode and you're thinking to yourself, holy shit, I've got all these habits created. Don't worry about it. We can always change habits. I've got a lot of episodes on changing habits. I teach people how to change mental habits throughout my coaching programs. If that is you, come see me. We'll get that done. That this episode is just about thinking about the compound effect that one decision can possibly have in your life, especially if you make that one decision every day or a lot of times. But once you decide to start thinking of your habits and habits you've, or sorry, of your decisions and decisions you've made in the past that you're currently living with because you're sitting in the compound effect of those decisions, like maybe you have now a teenage child who's like, I can't do anything. I can't, you do it for me, mom. You're constantly fixing things for them and you're listening to this episode and you're like, shit, I've got to change this now. And you begin to make a different decision. Because you're now convinced that the, the compound effect of changing the way you're interacting with your teenage child, even though you've interacted the same way for a long time, the compound effect of changing is going to be better. You're going to have the, the um, stamina to undergo any kind of discomfort that might, might arise from you making a different decision and this also having different and different impact on everybody around you. And you're going to start noticing with amazement, especially when your decisions impact other people, how they begin to make different decisions for themselves. Because they begin to understand the compound effect of constantly doing things a certain way versus another way. Because there are so many so, so many decisions that you make. I call them habits because if you made them in a lot for a long time, they have become habits, right? I have a habit of drinking morning uh, coffee in the morning. And if I don't, I get a headache. My, my body has habituated to drinking caffeine in the morning. Um, so it, it, when you think about your um, the decisions that you're making and you're thinking about the impact that they're going to have, I want, and, and you're already thinking like, okay, this will be a better decision long-term. Even if it seems painful right now or trivial, it's important that I make it because I'm now thinking of the compound effect of that decision. It's going to give you so much motivation to do the right thing now. Because often we opt doing the, we opt out of doing the right thing now because we think, ah, it's just today. It's fine. Every single person who makes this makes it to their 60s in terrible health looks back into their 30s when they were smoking and drinking excessively and think, shit, I wasn't thinking of the compound effect of that. Or I was thinking you so far away. I'm just drinking today. So listening to this episode in a way is waking you up to decisions that you're making today. We're about to start a new year right? What decisions do you want to make? And think of of it from the perspective of having made that decision for a full year. If you and I sit down next December 26th of 2023, 
and we look at the decision that you decided today that you were going to make in a consistent basis, what would that feel like? What will be a compound effect that you and I will be listening to, will be, will be experiencing? I was telling you about my decision of going back to the gym. That was a good decision. I like it. I'm highly motivated. I was telling you about the decision that I make of listening to books and podcasts while I'm in exercise mode, when my hormones are happy. I thought of the side effect of that. I really like that. So I, I, it's, I am intentional about doing this because I like it. I feel that I'm making decisions way more smart now, smarter, because I get to think of the side, like the end result. So I don't know when you're listening to this episode, maybe while you're showering, maybe while you're going for a walk, while you're stepping away from all family things, maybe you're listening to this in January. Whatever you're doing, just sit down for a moment and think of your life. See it all because everything you have right now in your life and don't have is as a result of decisions you have made up until now. And if you find that there's a problematic part of your life, maybe in relationships, maybe with finances, maybe with your health, I want you to specifically zoom into this area of your life neutrally with a lot of compassion and love and ask yourself, what decisions might have, might, may I have made or have I made up until now that brought me here? Friends, this is such a powerful exercise. If you've got debt, what decisions have I made? Being aware of the decisions you've made on a regular basis that seem insignificant at the time, but now have you $10,000, $20,000 in debt give you really important information for the decisions that you want to make next on a regular basis. So if on a regular basis, your, in, your, your decision has been to spend mindlessly without a budget. And as a result, you never have money saved. You're not in debt, but you never have money saved. And it always feels like you just don't have money. What was the decision you've made? Right? Like, oh, I'm shopping on Instagram as soon as it shows me something nice. And it seems like, well, I've got the money. Why not? That decision. Long term. <laughs> builds up to no money saved. One of the reasons I absolutely love being coach myself is that every week I get to notice what decisions have I made <laughs> and how are they impacting my mental health, my emotional well-being, my marriage, my business, my parenting. I have now gotten used to, not every day, but most nights when I enter my day and I've kind of go over how my day was, I think about like decisions I made of the foods I ate or whether or not I exercised, of how I connected to my husband, of how I connected to my son, how I coached that day, the decision I made about skipping lunch or having lunch and how that made me feel at the end of the day and thinking of this long-term. Shit, if I keep, if I keep up, the rest of the month, skipping my lunch, how am I going to feel? So do this exercise. Go over your life, see what you've got, what you don't have, and notice the decisions that you've made that have brought you there. One decision I've made for myself, and I so encourage you to make for yourself next year, get a life coach. Honestly, I keep thinking of that decision I made eight years ago, eight years ago. Now I haven't had the same coach for eight years. I've changed coaches because I've, I've had, um, not my life coach is pretty the same. It's been the same since I, I decided to have her and I can't recall how long, but for business coaching, I like it in different perspectives, but I'm always coach. And that's one of the decisions that at the end of the year, I'm always thinking like, I am where I am because of that decision <laughs> that I've made of investing in myself and having a coach. It's been so helpful. So why, why would I drop it? Why would I not decide on that? Like, it's also been really helpful for me to decide to do IV therapy, minerals and vitamins. That was a great decision. So. I, I just notice every week when I'm talking to my life coach, whatever the subject, I notice that I leave that session 
thinking, I'm so happy I made the decision to come to this session. Even the, especially the days, like, I, I don't know if this happens to you guys, if you have a therapist, if you, if you don't work with a coach yet, where you feel like I have nothing to talk about today. Maybe I'm going to cancel this coaching session. I don't really know what I'm going to talk about. Then I know I'm actually making the decision of not looking inwards for a great reason, probably. And so even in those sessions, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so happy I came. Like I pick up on thoughts that are not helpful. And then I just have then the decision to drop them. This is why I love awareness because it gives us the power to decide. Oh my God, I never realized I was doing this. Now that I know, I get to choose. What do I want to do about that? It's so important to create a relationship where you can just say your thoughts out loud. You can hear yourself. You can go through your human experience with another human and problem solve. And be called out on things that you're like, ah, maybe this isn't even a problem. That happened to me the other day. I'm like, well, my problem is A. <laughs> and as we started dissecting it, I'm like, oh, it's not even a problem. My brain made it seem a problem. I was actually like, wow, I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> because the brain will give you just simple random thoughts, right? And you believe them to be true and that's the way. So that's how you get to make new decisions. When you gain awareness, when you realize, okay, I see what, what decisions I've made, you take responsibility, and then you decide on making new decisions. So for my friends who have decision paralysis, remember that you can always decide again. You've made a decision that feels wrong. Like I decided I was not going to get up in the mornings. After two months, that was the wrong decision. Perfect. I'm now deciding differently. And then you implement on those decisions. You stick to them. Because why? You can see the compound effect of deciding that time after time. Do not let your brain separate you from making the best decisions for yourself. It's like the best gift you can give to yourself. All right. I will leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it's making you think. I hope you're going to go and do that homework. And if I've inspired you to get a life coach, I welcome you to work with me. We've got things going on. January is when I start with being the CEO of your own life, which is my 12 month program. It is a life coaching program like nothing else. It gives you one-on-one -on -one sessions. It gives you group sessions. It gives you access to video training where you can just learn strategies to on block your brain, coach yourself. We get started January 13th. If you head over to the show notes, you can submit an application. And in February, we are opening the doors for my 12-week coaching program, Reset Your Mindset. And very soon, in January 13th, I believe, we are going to be offering a full week of detox the mind which is actually one of my favorite workshops to teach it's a five-day workshop and it focuses focuses on detoxifying the mind from anxiety from expectations from talking meanly to yourself from being the, the worst self-critic you could possibly have to being more of an ally and the correct dates are January 16th to the 19th. You can sign up right now. Show notes have the links to detox the mind in January, to reset your mindset in February, and to being the CEO of your own life. I hope to see you in one of my programs. Enjoy the rest of your holiday season. Make the best of decisions. Bye now. <music>